Well, hey all, and welcome back. And I just got a package in from Shozy Store. This is the Joy Toy 9ST Legion, Fear Assault Mecha, and Mecha Calvary Company Commander. Now, if you're like me, you like Titanfall figures. And unfortunately, Titanfall figures are few and far between, and the ones you can get are quite expensive. Uh, I had an interest in Joy Toy because they have figures that carry on the aesthetic and some of the weathering techniques that are used on Titanfall figures. And I thought this would be just something to add to my edition that could fit on the shelf with them. So before we get started, let's go ahead and look at the packaging. And here we have the company commander. There were three different figures in all, and this is the one that I thought looked the best. And Shoz had an option for getting both of them at a discount if you got them together. So we have a nice illustration on the box. Got his, his gear, decent tight face. Here he is without his helmet, basic top. There he is with his helmet and some other gear. And then on the back, we have some stats and information. But yeah, pretty cool. So let's see, we actually have a little window here too. So I guess you have some display options. And then we have the photo of him here. Got him in there. Looks like all his gear. You can kind of hear stuff rattling in. So I'm excited to get that open. This is 118 scale, which I'm not too familiar with how their scale system is, but I do have other toys I will compare them to. And this was actually the main figure I was after here. And it's a very big box, so I'm going to try to keep it in frame. But this mech I thought was very cool on its own. But I really wanted to have a pilot to get interact with it, especially since it sort of carries that Titanfall vibe. And I thought this would be something cool to have a troop that could go inside and sort of be posed in a variety of ways. But we have him on the cover here, and you can see how in the picture his arms actually look really articulated. That's a pretty cool pose they have here. On the side, we have more of a schematic design. On the back, variety configurations. We have the backpack, which is sort of going to be really key here to where the pilot sets up. Another schematic, and the same sort of bottom and top as the other one. So, as for packaging, I think it's pretty nice looking. Uh, the packaging is a little on the thin side, not terribly thin, but it was in a nesting dolls variety of boxes. So I had a box within a box within a box, a little bit of boxception, and that kept it protected coming all the way over here from China. So, let's go ahead and get out of the box and see if it's worthy of our collection. All right, now we have the company commander out of the box, and he is pretty cool looking. He is far more detailed than I expected for a figure this size. We can go over the accessories real quick. So it comes with a little sheet here that shows the display options. So everything strips off him. You can have all these different armor pieces and weapons, and this is him fully armed without his helmet. And uh, I thought this helmet was pretty cool. It's definitely got that Titanfall look to it. Let's see if we can get it in focus, because it is, it is rather small. But it's got some good detail on there, and I like the coloring. So we've got that. We've got what looks like a submachine gun, ammo belt, a pistol, four ball joints, and four hands. Um, but even though the instructions actually only list two hands, it's cool that he comes with four. And the other item he has is this display base, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I, I uh, but as far as articulation goes, we do have forward back movement. We have a little bit of side to side movement, at least in one ankle. We have a double jointed knee, so we can get a nice tight bend like so. Then on the hips, he can move forward. He's got a ball joint, so he can move around. He's just hindered by his gear, which much of it is removable. Uh, a lot of these pieces come off. He pretty much strips down to just his basic fatigues, um, which is a pretty cool feature to have, especially if you have other things. Like, you just want to configure him in different ways. Then on the kind of the ab crunch in the middle, in addition to his hip movement, ball joint in the shoulders, typical range of movement there. Single jointed elbow, which is a little bit hindered by... The, the muscle mass they gave him, so he has a fairly decent sized bicep, uh, and that definitely interferes with the armor. Wrists are on a ball joint, and I would say that it's quite a bit smaller than even Revoltic Mini, so I would be careful with them. But they do they do fasten in there pretty tightly, uh, but to change out the hands, you can, you can just pull them out. But you might need a pair of pliers to actually get them out of the forearms. And then on the neck, and then I'm popping this off. One, it pops off pretty easy, but I thought I would show you 
there is a ball at the top of the neck and one at the base of the neck. So you have a double jointed neck, which is pretty cool. And the face sculpt, if we can get it to focus here, is actually quite good. It's, it's a little stylized, but it is realistic enough. But yeah, I think as far as the figure goes, this is pretty cool. This is, of course, my first of the line, and I don't really have a whole lot in the scale, but I did think it would be good to go ahead and compare him to some other figures that are similar size so you guys get an idea of exactly how big he is. And before I move on, I do want to mention that he does have a toe articulation in addition to the other articulations. What I'm known for is comparing figures. So I have a handful of figures and a similar size I would like to compare him to. This is a Star Wars figure. And of course, he is a little bit bigger. Um, not definitely a good representation, but it gives you an idea of how tall he is. Then I have a Microman figure from the Bio Machine series. And they're pretty spot on. I mean, even though they don't resemble each other or kind of work well visually, they are of the same scale. So that is something that could interact and he might actually be able to pilot the mechs from that. And of course, I think this is really what this line is supposed to scale with. I have my one-handed Cobra Commander. And even though I don't really collect G.I. Joe, I do have this on hand as something to show you guys. This really is in line with what a G.I. Joe figure would be. Uh, Cobra Commander might be just a hair taller, but it's not enough to where it would be outside the scale. Uh, actually, even though this only has one hand, the ball joint does fit in here and would allow me to use his hands as a fix for this guy. But I'm going to go ahead and keep my Cobra Commander as one-handed for now. And of course, I mentioned one reason I got this is because of my interest in Titanfall and how it resembles it. So I thought I would show the two Titanfall figures that come with a similarly sized mech. And as you can see, they are smaller. Uh, even if they were not bent over, they were fully standing up, they would be a decent bit smaller than him. Uh, so they're definitely not a one-to-one -one conversion. They're not going to work in that respect. But if you did have on the same shelf, they're not going to stand out so much that it's going to seem like it's a whole other line. It might actually display well enough together. Now, one note I'd like to go back about the ankle. What I did find, if you look at the instructions, the way it describes how to switch things out is you need to take them apart. You need to pull the head off and the torso and everything apart to get this armor off. So it is a little bit intensive to, you know, sort of change them out. It is not going to be the simplest thing as you would expect. However, that's the reason this looks so good. That's the reason things fit the way they do is because it's as tight and form-fitting as it would be if it was on a normal person. But the thing I want to point out is by pulling the foot off, I was able to adjust the joint that's in there. And it's sort of like a simplified Revotech joint, and I was able to repair or re uh, bring back that ankle movement. So that is something that's pretty nice about this figure is the fact that if you do find a little bit of an issue with posability, you can take it apart and maybe get it just right. But yeah, he, he's definitely dynamic. He's got some good weight to him. Uh, and, and I mean weight by visually, not the mass of the figure, because he can look like he's leaning. He's got some Costa Posto. Uh, he can definitely look like a dynamic living being. So that is pretty cool. Now let's see how he looks fully geared up. And here we have him. He has his shoulder belt on, has his helmet on, which looks really good. And he has his gun. And now to mention about his gun, it's actually pretty tricky to put the hand to, on it. And that is because the fingers are such a soft rubber. So what I found, I use a toothpick to hold the thumb away as I put the other hand in there. You just need something to keep the thumb from bending because the thumb keeps wanting to close. And so you just want to get it in a way to where it works. But yeah, he's a good looking figure. He definitely looks like something that would either fit in the Titanfall universe, but even on its own, even taking that away uh, and, and looking at what it is on its own merit, I think it is a solid figure. So, and now on to the mech, and I want to show you guys how he is packed. We have this pretty cool clamshell where the mech is within the styrofoam. We have his accessories and another piece of styrofoam, and then we have the manual. And all the manual really shows is what the different items are and how to attach them. And this is something I'm going to have to do off camera because it's going to be intensive. Yeah. Here we have the rifle, we have different armor, and what you can see here, these are actual fabric straps that are going to hold this together with clips on them. 
All right, so here this guy is out of the box. And the first thing I want to show off is how he compares to a 12 inch scale figure. And I hadn't put his gear on yet because I expect it's going to be pretty challenging because I've done it with this soldier story figure and it's a lot of work. Everything is on a micro scale and you need to use tweezers and other high dexterous methods of getting everything assembled and tightened. So I know it's something I have to do off camera and it's going to be time consuming. But even if you don't include the figure that comes with this guy, you just look at him as a robot, he actually fits in really well with the 12 inch figure scale. He's essentially 12 inch militarized robot. So for that respect, he works pretty well. But I wanted to look at his articulation real quick because I have a feeling when I put some of the gear on him, we're gonna lose a bit of it. And I'm trying to get him as out of camera as I can, but it's a little tricky because he is tall. We have an ankle movement. We have a toe movement. We have another ankle movement with a good strong ratchet. And we have a knee here and then a secondary knee with a piston. We have a moving flap here. I mean, that's a, that's a lot just from the knee down. That's actually really cool. Uh, then, of course, we have an outward movement for the hip. We have rotation for the hip. We have waist rotation. As you can see here, there's actually pistons that move. And then a crunch. Now, what you can see here that's happening is these popped off. And this actually is articulated as well. So we can move it in and correct that. So really, when you're doing that, you got to do it at both at the same time. So you kind of figure these out as you move it around. I will say that even though it has these hoses, I'm not a huge fan of them because they came in the package with these sort of pinches on them rather than being completely smooth. So it's, you know, I might kind of keep my eyes open for some better silicone hoses to replace these with, but it's still pretty cool that they're on there. Actually, rather than wasting your guys' time and putting those back on, I'll do those off camera. We'll get back to the articulation. In the shoulder, we have a butterfly joint, which is really cool. In addition to that, we have full rotation, heavy ratchet, an outward ratchet, then in the bicep swivel. And one thing I'm doing is even though, since this thing is all plastic and not die cast, I am being extra careful because I do not know how rigid everything is. So I'm bending the elbow at the base here, but we have, a, all these ratchets are pretty strong. And then at the wrist, we have a ball joint and then what seems to be another joint in the hand. So some good articulation there, same with the fingers. We have some articulation of the knuckles, thumb. Yeah, this is really sharp. Now it does seem like the very tips of the fingers are fixed, but they have enough bend to them where everything feels natural. It's like something you would expect from a human type character. Uh, and going back into the, into the back, we have some articulation in this unit here, which is, this is where it's connected, but this is kind of like a popover chest protector cabinet. Uh, some movement in here. This back opens up, but we'll worry about that when we deal with the pilot. And then there's this double jointed neck that's based in here. So we can get some head articulation and it rotates and his eyes have articulation. This guy is loaded with parts to pose. And that's actually really awesome. But at the same time, you're gonna have to be aware of these tight joints and everything when you're posing them because it's gonna be a lot of work and fiddling to get him in the poses. So think about it this way. He's not gonna be an action figure. He's not gonna be something you play with. He's gonna be something you sort of get adjusted to hold some really awesome poses and put on the shelf for display. I just want you guys to keep that in mind as you're working with him. Another thing I wanted to point out is that these little pouches actually have styrofoam in them. I'm gonna leave it in there. Uh, normally I would have taken something like that out, but there's nothing else to put in there and they're just gonna get saggy uh, and kind of collapse without the support. So I, I would just leave the styrofoam. The one that's visible here, if I can adjust the flap, what I might actually do is color it and make it like something else or just push it down further. But that's just another cool touch that gives this thing some sort of realism and depth and, and fullness. So anyway, I'm gonna take this guy off camera, put on the rest of his gear, and then we can get a final look of how he is in a complete robot mode. Now, before we get into the details of the fully armed mech, I'd like to go into how the pilot interacts with the mech. And so what we have here is the box that was mounted to the back of the mech. And we've got the shoulder canopy here and the chest piece that connects there. And we have the pilot. So he is resting here and he actually will close up and fit inside here. Now, one thing I want to point out that I think is really important that I was not aware of because, you know, even though this is a really cool figure, the instructions are fairly limited and there's not a whole lot of photos to give indication of what to do. 
I was able to figure out that this comes loose. Now this is in there extremely tight. It was in there very tight. And to actually fit him in there, I was trying to pull his armor off. And once I got in there, I'm like, I really got to be able to take this off because I cannot actually close him up with this on there. And so one thing uh, to really consider is how you go about it. And it's really a lot of slowly wiggling and working it straight back. You don't want to bend it. You don't want to force it. You just have to really spend some time with it and work it out. But once you do, you can either mount it here or you can mount it on the other side. So go ahead and move him out of the way so we can look at the cockpit here. We have this other groove here where this can mount and you can do some of the poses that are in the stock photography. And this is just mount here. He could stand up there like he's going inside or you can actually close him up and he'd pilot the inside of the cockpit. I just think that's a really cool addition. It's a really kind of clever concept for a backpack, almost like you could have a drop ship to these guys or, you know, there's there's different ways you could probably play this out in a film or whatever if you wanted to have this really unique concept for a backpack. Now we've got some thrusters back here, some nice painted detail, but everything's just really cool here. It's just so nice to see they spent the time to go inside and do all the details. You can see all these little levers and sensors and lights and display and all that painted up. I mean, that's such a nice job. I really appreciate that did that. And it's also it's a cool factor of, of displaying with him. Now, I am going to personally keep him displayed as a pilot next to it. But if I do decide to play around with some photography, this lends itself to it greatly. Now, one thing to note about this... Uh, it is a little tricky to take off. There's two pegs on the side here and you just kind of work them out a little bit and it comes off here. Uh, this raises up and you just have to work off this area here. Now, as you can see, I kind of got a little bit of a scuff on here, but the way this is so distressed and heavily weathered, it really blends in. You wouldn't even notice unless I point it out. And even when it's installed, this part's actually covered up. I think in this mode, the only thing I would really note that I'd like to change is maybe some more detailed stuff around here as well as with the neck piece because this part makes it look more like a toy where you have all this realistic detail around here. I think that section could have been designed a little bit better for when the backpack is removed, but it's not like that's going to be all the time. That's really just a once in a while thing. And of course you have the loose hoses here and I'm, I'm definitely going to look for another material that has a better bend to it rather than the kink when it's in, displayed together. So I'm zoomed out as much as I can here so I can show everything. Uh, but here he is, here he is fully fitted with his gear and uh, we've got the ammo clips here. We've got the little packages. We've got the armor we've added. The only armor that feels a little bit weird. So we have this one on both sides. It's just this piece hanging down that sort of covers. It's just awkward. It doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it. This is one piece that probably would have been suitable to put a little piece of metal in just so it hangs down more easily because its weight doesn't really outdo the fabric that's holding it together. That said, I love this thing. I really think it's cool. I think the pilot's pretty cool. Uh, the pilot for me is still secondary. I'm more about the mech, but this guy with the details, the articulation, all these points, all these little things they've done on here is just so cool looking. It definitely fits in with the trends right now with the way of doing mechs and whatnot. And of course it's not a Titanfall character, but if you like the three zero Titanfall stuff, I really think this is right up your alley. And it's a price that's very palatable for what you're getting because you're looking at something that's a 12-inch figure. But yeah, with the articulation this thing has, I, I just love it. But to go on, uh, to not gush too much longer, I'm going to cover a couple other things in here. And one of them being this, which I did not see in the instructions. Uh, I mean, it's sort of mentioned, but it doesn't say what to do with it. I would have liked if it plugs in somewhere on the mech, like a battery pack, because it does just seem, it has a warning little symbol on it. So I'm assuming it's something along those lines, but it's not clear. Uh, the instructions could be better. That's probably one of the downfalls of this, but the packaging is good. The packing uh, technique is really good. The quality of the materials is really good. I like so much about this. And then we have this really cool rifle. Uh, it has a shoulder strap on it. It's a little bit elasticy. Uh, and then we have the stock that does come out, but you can use it to change the different shape or different lengths so that uh, you can suit different things. Got a scope on the top. Would have been nice, for all the detail they've done, it would have been nice to have the scope with a little um, something painted on there. Not necessarily a crosshair, but something that makes it look a little glassy uh, or like a lens. Though, I mean, I don't know why he would use a scoped weapon anyway, unless he had a camera in it that was linked to his head unit. Another little detail about the gun is actually that the stock comes apart. And that allows you to have the range of movement 
to put his hand in there because you cannot just slide his hand in without scuffing the paint. So this comes out, which I think is a great design. And then of course, with this coming off, it allows you to get the strap over his shoulder and arrange everything in a nice way before you display it rather than having to wrestle with it. But yeah, this is really cool. Now, like I said, this is not an action figure. This is a display piece more so than anything. It's not because it's fragile per se, it's that it is got a lot of moving parts and it's got some really strong ratchets. And it's not something you can just click, 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 click. You really wanna be delicate with it and do things in a manner uh, that's really just about getting that right pose sorted out. But yeah, I'm I'm loving this guy. I think he's really cool. So one thing I like to do is compare to other figures. And so here we have the Play Arts Kai Titanfall Atlas. And look how much bigger he is than him. I mean, you, you can sort of see the semblance of the aesthetic. I think it definitely ties in as far as the weathering and the look. But of course, they do look like they're something from different series. And of course, the scale is also a little bit different. But it's still pretty cool. I think they could still fit on the same shelf together uh, as something you could display together. And here he is with BT. I do feel like he might fit in a little bit better with BT as far as height goes. But the same thing. It's a different scale of figure. And of course, BT's paint applications doesn't really stand up compared to the Play Arts Kai version or this. Th these are far more finer than this where BT is a more of a mass-produced. Uh, it's just not as distressed. It still looks good. It just doesn't have that same impact or quality. Then we have the 3-0 Strider, which is one of my favorite figures out of my entire collection. And I really like the look of these together. I mean, if you discount the fact that the Fear Mecha has a small pilot and just completely ignore that, this would be a suitable drone figure that could fit in with the 3-0 Titanfall line. Uh, if you have played Titanfall 2, there's actually a fairly decent sized Mecha drone that invades a certain point in the map and it definitely could fit within that scale. But like I said, if you are a Titanfall fan and you like the 3-0 style, I think this Fear Mech would definitely appeal to you. So just to recap, I think this is a really great design. I love the articulation, all the detail, all the extra features. The instructions can be a little bit better, but overall, I really love this figure and I really think it's something that's gonna be, at the very least, in my top five this year but as far as what i've already purchased it's top one right now it's really great but if you're looking for something on its own that goes with the 12 inch figure line something that could be just a like some sort of robotic soldier that fits in with the 12 inch scale figures or if you want to get the pilot and have something that works the gi joe scale this is a really cool setup and i really hope they make more of this line now joy toy does make some other mech figures and i might dive into those this is something that's a little bit new for their makings and definitely worth a look. But I got mine from Show Z. I'll put a link in the description below. Let us know if this is worthy of your collection, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>